Hi everyone. Today I'm going to do something simple and show you about uh, the first camera that I got for myself, the Canon UF1, not to be confused with the Canon F1N. Um, uh, earlier this week I was thinking about what kind of info I would put in a video about cameras and I was wondering should I tell you about the history and the specs of a camera or should I tell you how everything works and show you how to load film? Or should I get my sister to videotape me while I take photos and uh, put them up after I press the shutter button? Um, uh, all that kind of info is important to think about when you're shopping for a camera. But um, I figured you could uh, read the manual or a website uh, made by a camera collector or browse Instagram and Flickr for that sort of info. So I'm going to focus on uh, the things you would look for when you go to a camera shop and uh, get to handle a, a camera in person. Um, since most of us are going to be buying our film cameras on eBay or KEH or something, um, I figure the sort of hands-on imp uh, impressions are uh, the most important thing to look at. Um, so uh, let's get started with the camera fondling, I guess. Um, first off, the, the size and weight is pretty average for a camera made somewhere between the 70s and 80s. Um, kind of heavy and dense, very solid feeling. Um, the grip uh, is kind of small, but it's enough to hold on to. Um, it's not the most comfortable camera to hold if you're taking photos for a long time and, you know, and, you know, holding it onto, onto it constantly. Um, uh, the viewfinder viewfinder is it's really bright and it's really big almost too big since I wear glasses um, I have the PJ screen in it which has the partial metering pattern um, with uh, the bright uh, laser mat um, for shorter lenses so it's really really bright um, the focusing snap is really good the um, has good contrast and you can tell when things are in focus really easily, so I definitely recommend it for if you want a nice viewfinder. Uh, the metering display is pretty nice too. On the right side, uh, it shows you all the apertures. Um, uh, the, the bar shows you what the camera thinks you should set the aperture, and then uh, a circle shows you um, the, the aperture you actually uh, have set on the lens. Um, and uh, uh, there's a light that comes on when you're um, when you're half pressing the shutter. Um, uh, what else? Uh, oh, let's uh, let's press the shutter button and see how it sounds. In my opinion, it doesn't sound very good. It's kind of loud, and there's a metallic uh, ringing at the end of it. And the shutter. Uh, the film advanced lever is pretty bad too. It's really metallic and crackly. Uh, it's um, it's not the smoothest uh, film advanced lever out there. Um, the shutter speed dial is pretty good. Um, very crisp and firm. Uh, it sort of has a wiggle to it since you can lift the ring up and then set it to the ape uh, setting. Uh, but you know, that's normal, I guess. It's not like a Leica where it's all one solid piece. And over here, you have the EV compensation and the ISO dial. Uh, EV compensation, you have to press this uh, button uh, to turn it. So it's really, it's kind of, ugh, it's kind of fiddly. I, I can just Not, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, I don't like it. Um, 
the ISO uh, dial, you have to push the this little latch here, and then turn it around. And this is just, I imagine it's like the worst if you're wearing gloves. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you live somewhere cold or you go out when it's uh, really early or late in the day. So, uh, what else is there? On the lens, the focusing ring is nice, smooth, um, and tight, but not quite as good as a, a Pentax Takamar. Uh, the aperture ring is really bad. It just sounds clanky or something has a hollow sound to it and the, the tents aren't very crisp it has a what this it has this wobble to it so not the best aperture rings out there um besides that uh you open the film back and like that um I don't know, it's fine, and that's about it. Oh wait, uh, the aperture stop down lever. Um, it's really firm, so you have to do it with your index finger on your other hand. Um, it's not something you would uh, press with your uh, ring finger on your right hand. Um, that's about it. Um, compared to other uh, cameras of the era, like the Nikon F3, the Pentax LX, and the Olympus OM4, it's, um, you know, it's pretty good. Um, if I had to do it all over again, though, I would get the Pentax LX because it has a much smoother shutter and film advance, and it's, um, it's one of the more compact uh, SLRs. Um, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. I like the lenses. This is a 135-2.8 and I got like the 100-2.8 and 200-F4. I basically only use this for portraits these days. So I sold all my other lenses. Um, uh, so anyhow, I um, uh, hope you got something out of it. Um, let me know in the comments what you think. And thanks for watching. Uh, have a nice week.